Bold Look Podcast, your number one resource for everything bold freight trucking. Hey guys, Jared Flynn with the Bulk Loads Podcast. Got Tally with me. What's going on? Oh man, did you have a good fourth? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Fourth July is my favorite holiday, so. You have all your fingers? I do, I do. So, yep. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, great time, a lot of people, and uh, just an amazing event. So I always wish, like, there's some, you know, Christmas time, like, you have, like, the whole month. I feel like 4th of July. Like, we should keep celebrating all through July. You well, know, we changed America, patriotism. We changed the Bulk Loads logo for this month. Yeah. Red, white, and blue on our socials. Um, just, yeah, to show the, how patriotic we are around here. Uh, but I agree. I'd read, like, let's celebrate it the whole month. Do we still have shirts available? We do. Yep. I think we are starting to run low, but I think we have about a hundred left. So we want to get them out the door to you. Um, if you still want one, we'll link it below. Joe, we'll put the link in the description. Simply go and uh, claim one and we'll free send it out to you. Charge. Yep. No Completely charge. Free. We even pay for the shipping. Yep. And uh, they're actually really comfortable shirts. Like they're super soft. Yeah. I've got a lot of people uh, complimenting them um, and, and messaging on Facebook that they're receiving them and everything. Everyone's uh, happy that they're getting them. Yeah. So cool. But yeah, drop down, get one. Super simple. May take you 30 seconds to fill out that. And we'll we'll drop one yep. uh, to you. Um, also, oh, I wanted to say this, man. Dan Redding, uh, we sent him some semi-sam books. Oh, yeah. And he would sent some pictures of uh, they had it in their parade, the yep. July parade, uh, which was just awesome. I'm always honored uh, to be a part of that and to share Semi Sam with those out there. And Joe, he'll throw up some photos if you want to see the parade and, and some of the photos, giving them out to the kids. But uh, yeah, Dan, thanks for doing that. I've actually got some other requests, and I just want to throw that out there. Um, if you would like, we did the semi sand books really to just um, inform the industry more yep. about, um, and especially children, the benefits and um, details of agriculture and trucking. So um, reach out to us if you have an event or uh, your kid's classroom, yep. any um, uh, groups or organizations that they're in, we'd be glad to ship you some of those that you can give out. Yeah. Um, or simply you just have a, a grand, uh, a grandchild or, or son or daughter who would be interested in, in just a single book. We'll, we'll ship you yeah. one off as well. Yeah. Just send it to podcast at bulkloads.com and yeah, we'll get you some semi sand books. So yeah, Dan, thank you so much uh, for doing that and getting those out there. Yep. So um, I'll let you kick it away with the uh, truck feature. Yep. Today's truck feature. We have uh, Wade Riffey with Riffey transport out of Reeds, Reedsburg with Wisconsin. Uh, Wade's been a member since 2013, so almost our beginning. So we thank you, Wade, so much for your support um, and being with us. But this sharp rig, yeah. pulling a belt trailer there. Yeah. I'm finally glad yeah. we're exploring the other trailer options here. Yeah, I'll say a couple things about Wade Riffey, and I'm going to have Joe throw up another picture from the Mid-America Truck Show. But Wade was there, met him for the first time. Again, have been talking with him since our very beginning back in 2011. He's always been a huge supporter. But uh, I'll say this, he's done really well. We had him on the podcast. I can't remember how long ago we can look up that episode, but started a transloading business. Yep. But again, I'm always get excited when you see people like that, that are, see these other opportunities yeah, to add grow their own business. business. But yeah, he's got his own, tra uh, another transloading business along with the trucking company and they are killing it. So yeah, Wade, congratulations out there. Thanks for sharing the photo. Yep. Awesome. Again, if you guys want your uh, truck featured on here, uh, definitely send us a photo on our social media pages, comment below below or uh, simply just email them at podcast at bulkloads.com and we'd love to feature you. On to the show. Today, we're going to have Malcolm Smith. He is with the National Dump Truck Association. And uh, I was referred to bring Malcolm on and I'm glad I did. As you all know, we, so bulk loads, we don't do dump trucks on our site. But we have a lot of members that run in dumps that also have run dump trucks locally. So we wanted to bring Malcolm on the show just to talk about what they're doing, the awareness that they're spreading out there, things that they do regulatory to help promote dump truck, uh, dump trucking in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good episode. Malcolm, uh, we won't dive into all the details, but I like how he kind of highlighted just the brought to attention, the bad business in the industry. Yeah. And we, that kind of, uh, 
coincides with what we've seen a little bit with in the bulk industry um, ourselves. Um, so I like that he was able to bring that up, just the seasonality of it, and also how to, if you're running a dump truck or starting a dump truck company, how to prepare uh, for the seasonality of it and how, what you can do in the off season to still be consistent and work. Yeah. Yeah, we'll dissect a little bit of that uh, after the show here. So cool. Well, with that said, here is my conversation with Malcolm Smith with the National Dump Truck Association. Malcolm, thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, man, just give us that uh, elevator pitch. What is the National Dump Trucking Association? Well, the National Dump Truck Association is the first and only organization that represents the dump trucking professionals on a national scale. So, and we do that by way of uh, education, get them access to resources and get them opportunities once their their business is set up and, and, you know, set up to look presentable for, to go after opportunities such as government contracting, uh, DOT work, uh, uh, state and local contracts, um, and also private contracts as well. But it's pretty much what we are, the ecosystem for dump trucking excellence. And I know you guys are based out of the Atlanta area. Um, does your association, does it, how far does it stretch across the U.S.? Oh, it's in every state. We have, um, we, we're not, we haven't touched every state just yet. We're still getting, you know, getting members. Of, we're not in Maine or anything like that, but it's definitely the Southeast, uh, Texas, California. We've, we've touched on, I, I have to check the records, but we, we, we're at least 40 states. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Well, you're not just the CEO, but I mean, you're also still an owner of a dump trucking company, right? I mean, that's kind of where this led to, but really talk about the why behind starting the National Dump Truck Association. Cause um, we talked a little bit off air, but I mean, there was a lot of pain points that you saw and ways to improve this, but really talk, what, what is the heart behind the National Dump Truck Association? The heart behind the National Dump well, when I was, um, you know, doing my, oh, growing my company, uh, starting out my first two years were, were, oh my God, they were terrible. It was, it was, I didn't know anything. I didn't know enough. I didn't have enough information. Uh, I, I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't have a resource to, there was no mentor or anything. So it was like, what, what, you know, just trial and error. And you go through a lot of things during trial and you lose a lot of money. Um, you have a bunch of hiccups that you shouldn't have. And, there was nobody to talk to about it. And I saw the way the industry was, was going. There was a lot of, I'll say bad business going on um, in dump trucking. And we, we really uh, set out just to be a resource for people who want to get into the industry, as well as people who are already in the industry that need to tighten up their business, tighten up their big business acumen, have products that are available to them. So, you know, if you want to grow and sustain your business, you can, such as insurance. Uh, we have captive policies. We have, uh, it's so many different things. We'll, we'll be here all day just talking about it. But um, I just saw a need in the industry for, for someone like a, like a, a, a center or association where you could, you could just call and talk to somebody about the industry, even if that's just to make you feel better. You know, we, we have people on standby that can help you navigate through, you know, uh, a bunch of different things that you may get into in, in dump trucking, flat tires. Uh, I'm stuck here. I need a tow here, or I need to be pulled out of a, a ditch. Like what, what do you do? It's, it's an industry that's, that's not really talked about and, you know, yeah. getting out there, you won't, you won't know <laughs> until you get into it. And I think that's why sometimes it gets a bad rap because people get into it, not enough information and they fail. And then it's in, I don't want to do it anymore, but once you get into it and you hit it the right way, it's a, it's a beautiful industry. Beautiful. Well, talk about for people that maybe not be, that aren't in the industry, you talked about like the, the bad business that, that sometimes it can go on. What is that bad business? That bad business is you, you contact, you contact a company and you, they say, Hey, can you do this job for a hundred dollars? Sure. All right. I, I just, I'm just trying to keep my, keep the wheels turning. So I agreed to do the job. And then at the end of the job, it's like the companies, they stop answering your calls. They start getting goals. They don't, they don't, you know, it's no more connection. And it's like, how do I get paid? Like I, I've done the job for you guys for a week. We, you know, laid asphalt. I, I'm owed about $2,000. How do I get my payment? And a lot of companies, you know, I would say the reputable companies, they don't do this, but you know, you have a couple companies who still are doing bad business and they 
will just get ghosts and stop answering and drag on payment for for months and months. And in dump trucking, if you're a you know, small business, you can't afford to go 30 to 60 to 90 days without being paid. And yeah, that's the type of bad. When I when I got into the business, my first two years, I came across a lot of that. I I had to send a lot of letters, certified letters to companies. I've had to get lawyers involved just to get payment. And it's it shouldn't be that way. That's what gives the business a bad rap. And and I think that, you know, us being national, we we can help, you know, kind of edge out that type of business and and really grow the right way. I you know, it, it they're companies that we deal with uh, this just the name if you see that matthews which in georgia uh C. W. matthews brent scarborough they're doing business the right way and i think that should be you know consistent across the board you know yeah well and it's funny you bring that up I'll, i want to give this example and i like for you to expand you know we started a factoring business back in 2014 and i kid you not one of our very first customers was a construction company well it was a dump truck that was hauling for a construction company and i'm not going to name the location but dump truck was hauling the loads sent us the tickets we paid the trucker we sent the invoice to the construction company nothing wouldn't pay us. Yes. And then they came back and yes. said, no, those, t- those, you know, those hours are incorrect in the wrong build and make a short story. Like we ended up having to eat those dollars because we did pay them to the trucker. And so the trucker got paid. Um, but the company, we didn't have anything in writing or anything certified that, that they owed us that money. And we always chalk it up that it was, you know, graduation or tuition. I mean, you know, learning a learning yeah. lesson in that, but it was our, it was a wake up call to be like, Hey, here's legitimate documents that this company hauled this. And I think it was maybe by the hour or whatever. And we ended up um, eating a considerable amount of that money. And I think that's kind of what you alluded to. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not saying it happens at all. But yeah, it just seems like, and I think maybe in other trucking, like we're, we do bulk trucking for all over the road and all that. Not saying it can't happen there. But uh, yeah, it was a wake-up call or one of our first experiences to, to being careful about you know, the, the factoring money to companies and making sure that you get that back. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the one thing I tell the members, if, if a company doesn't send you a hauler's agreement when you first contact them, that, that's, pro- that's almost like a red flag because most legit companies are going to set you up with a hauler's packet. And that's, you know, the agreement that, hey, we'll be doing this job. You'll be paid on this day. You'll be paid either ACH or cash. It's going to lay all that out and let you know when you'll be paid, how you'll be paid. Uh, they may take your... Uh, you know, your your account number so they can uh, send it through direct direct deposit. But uh, haulers agreement, when they ask you for a haulers agreement, that's pretty much a tells a sign that they are a legit company. And that's how you can kind of weed out, all right, this is weird. Why didn't they contact me and talk about pay? Or why didn't they contact me and say, how are you going to be paid? Because that's the, that's one of the most important things. So yes, that, that is, it's it's a lot of that that goes on. And um, I think, you know, we we really can can minimize i'm not gonna say it's gonna stop but w- the one thing we're really uh building on is our education we we love educating the truckers we love educating our, our members and like i tell them it's not about me like i am it's it's about the team that we have the, the people that's involved it's, it's a bunch of high level people who have done business for years we have a uh, high level advisors uh, it's 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 not about me at all. It's it's the team that we have that we put you in front of. We have we we partner with banks. They come and do webinars about financial literacy, about how to get uh, ready for buying a dump truck. Because a lot of times members say, "I want to yeah. buy a dump truck." Okay, what does your credit look like? Do you have any money for down payment? Do you have any history? They walk them through that and they help them get to the the, the pinnacle. They because a lot of times they get there and and then they get oh man, I can't get the truck. Well, no, we're going to put you in touch with Regions Bank or we're going to put you in touch with Equify or these type of companies that can help you and walk you through the process so when it's time, you won't have any issues. So that's the education is really what we're, we we lead with um, and, and making it a safer industry too because our safety and compliance is is top tier. We have a director of safety and compliance who is, oh man, he's he's amazing. So I keep I keep reiterating that when I get talk about it, I get really like energetic because it's just uh, some good great things we're doing and, and it's again it's not about me it's the team that we have it's it's crazy. Yeah, no, absolutely, Malcolm. Just from your experience, especially in the dump truck world, you talk about guys getting into the industry. 
most of those guys, and I know they can be all different, but is it is it usually drivers that were hauling for somebody else and they want to get their own dump truck? But like most of the people that you're talking to, experiencing, that what got them into dump trucking in the beginning? Sometimes it's it's uh they were drivers. They started off maybe driving somewhere else. Maybe let's for an example, let's say uh, a city bus. They may have started driving the city bus, or it may have been a school bus driver. And they said, hmm, I can probably make more money driving a dump truck. So. You know, they went and started driving for a company, and then I guess over time, they say, like, man, I want to do this full time and do it for myself. And that's where the hurdle comes in. How do you do it? Where do you get the information? Where do you get the education? And where is somebody helping me with my business acumen, learning how to sell, learning how to go get contracts, learning how to look like a legit business and not something that's just put together and rushed? And I think by us doing that, people are taking it more serious instead of, you know, Dump truck drivers have never really had the, I guess, history of, of having the best business acumen, but that's what we're doing for them. We're, you know, polishing them up. And this is, you know, what the contractors, the government and who given the government state contract, this is what they want to see because they want a lot of people aren't qualified. And so just give them that, that opportunity, I think has really helped them and they, and they, they really love it. Can you talk about too, for, again, for someone listening to this podcast that, uh, maybe interested in dump trucking, doesn't know kind of the the landscape, but about how it works, you know, and there's different types of dump trucking. I mean, as far as hauling different products and all that, but if we can kind of limit it up, like most dump trucking, if you're hauling, say for an asphalt job or they're laying asphalt, is it paid by the hour? Is it paid by the load? Like how does, I mean, how does the numbers work, you know, financially, how the, how the dump truck's making money? So it's three ways. You can be paid by the hour. You can be paid by the tonnage. So that's the amount that you're carrying. And or you can be paid by the load. Um, when you're going by the load, they don't really account how much you're 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 really carrying. Uh it's just really by the load. How much how much ever you get, that's how much ever you get. Um by the load, that's where the the how much you're carrying matters. So they may say, hey, five dollars a load. And let's say if you're hauling 17 tons times five dollars times 17 tons, that's how much that load. It's going to pay out. And within that, you have to decide, okay, if I want to make $800, how many loads do I have to do at that that weight, 17 tons, because the rate is $5 a ton, how yep. many loads do I have to do to get that $800? Then you have by the hour, and a lot of people love by the hour because it's, you know, sweet. You just, as long as you keep hauling and, and stay consistent, you know, it's no, really no rush and you know you want to be safe but as long as that truck is out there working and and staying consistent it's going to get paid so i guess you know, i want to interject right there because I, I see a lot of i should say you know what i noticed just going up and down the road especially asphalt jobs just just if we're stuck on that one but sometimes these jobs you'll see 20 dumb trucks all lined up waiting you know on load and it's like i always look at that and like man, I hope those guys are being paid by the hour, not by the load, because I don't know how fast that's turning in. It's me going down the highway and just looking over there. But like, man, some of those guys, they may be sitting there for a long time before they get a load. So hopefully that's an hourly job. Yes, most times when you see that, it, it is hourly. Um, and when you see more, like 20 more trucks, it, it has to be hourly because sometimes we will go out there and let's say the days work eight hours, you may do two or three shifts. I mean, you may do th two or three loads um, just because of the nature of how many trucks. Each truck has to get into the asphalt spreader, dump the asphalt, go back to the asphalt plant if they're not getting millings. So sometimes they will do what they call mill and fill. You'll mill or you'll lay the asphalt and then you'll mill, which is like breaking up the ass, the old asphalt so it can be resurfaced by the asphalt, the new asphalt. So Sometimes we will do that, but most times it's hourly. And long as again, long as you you know stay consistent and you're not uh, sitting around at a, at a gas station just chilling, sleep or something like that, you yeah. know everything works out. <laughs> I guess the big question I want to ask when it really comes to this is talking about the money that can be made. I think that's what everybody wants to know. Like, hey, if I get into dumb trucking, you know, how much can I make doing this? Because it is, in my mind, it can be very seasonal. You know, so I mean, asphalt, you know, in certain areas, they're not laying asphalt in the winter months. So it's slower or there's certain times of year you get bad weather where you may stop a job for a while. So you're not running there. So man, it just seems like there's just a lot of ups and downs. No pun intended talking about dump trucking. But like, can you just give us a scope of like what somebody could potentially make? I mean, if they if they get into this business, how much that one driver, one truck can walk home with at the end of the year? I'll say this. 
And I always use, I'd say one truck could easily get you 100K at the end of the year. One truck. And now, you know, what goes into the like this, this. When you say 100K, is that gross revenue or is that after all expenses? That's, that's, that, that's, that's gross revenue. That And when okay. I say that's just, that's just working day shift, maybe six, seven months out of the year. Um, you have night work as well. So that's another added revenue you can add on. So I, I like to give people like examples because, you know, I don't want to just, you know, you can make 125000 That, you know, that's not accurate. I'll say this, 100 k day shift, six months out, six to seven months out of the year easily. That That is not hard at all. But I'll say this, you're right, it is seasonal, but knowing the business of it, it, it you, you'll you understand that you have to move and, and haul different materials at different times. So, yes, asphalt is, this is asphalt season right now. When it's warm, you know, everything is, is, is going good. As soon as it gets cold, asphalt shuts down because... And don't quote me, I think it's 45 degrees or lower. They don't lay asphalt. Yeah. Um, but that 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 comes when you know it's getting cold, that's when you start to put trucks on different materials, such as sand, such as concrete, such as gravel. That stuff moves in the rain. That stuff moves when it's cold. That stuff moves pretty much all year round. Um, concrete plants. Concrete plants need materials to keep making the concrete. Uh, so they will go and to the quarries and they you know, what they do, um, what they call backhauls. They will, you know, just, or stockpiles, sorry, stockpiles. Well, you can just go and do stockpiles, uh, all day and, and make a good, you know, a, a good amount of money from just stockpiles. But the money, the money's there. It's just knowing the business and knowing when to move. Uh, a lot of people say, yeah, it's only seven, uh, eight month, nine month thing. Uh, not really. If you know what materials to move. So I was on the job last year, my, my company, JHM, we were pretty much running year round. Uh, because we got on the sand contract and the sand was moving year round. If it rained, didn't matter. The sand still was moving. So once you learn the industry, you can you can better maneuver through the business. And th- this is what we're teaching uh, our members. And and you know they are really saying like, okay, all right, I, I see the the difference. So some people focus on the negative rather than you know you, you can go buy a truck. You can try to start a business there's entrepreneurs everywhere and small business runs America their biggest employer and yeah it might not work out you might fail but at least you have the opportunity to go try it on a level playing field where some countries you won't even have that opportunity you won't have the freedoms to even attempt to do anything like that you know right wrong or indifferent and there's there's plenty of negatives we could go into if we want both you know, your perspective, my perspective, how the country's run, and some people share that stuff a little too much. But at the end of the day, we should all be grateful that we're here and we have the opportunities we have and the freedoms we enjoy. And remember that, you know, it's because people decided to sign on that dotted line and decided that, you know what, there's something worth protecting, there's something worth doing here, and didn't didn't give up and sit on the sidelines. That's awesome. Marcus, when you said that 100K gross revenue, so that's all all revenue made, but if you look at expenses, like what is that driver really making at the end of the day? Like how much is he clearing of that 100K? So it really depends on how his business is set up. Uh, and when I say the 100K, that was just minimum. Like you, you really can do that with ease. Uh, it, to give an example, you can do day work thousand to fifteen hundred a day, as well as turn around night work. Let's say you bring in another thousand in night work. So, hundred K is easy. That that is that's not, that's that's probably working three days a week. Um, you know, but if I had just say hundred K in somebody's business, it, it depends on the truck. It depends if their truck is new, or newer. They're you know going to have higher expenses. Uh, insurance is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, the fuel may be a little bit better, but it's uh it really depends on how their business is set up. If someone has a truck that's paid off, uh that whole maybe that whole hundred K is, I mean, maybe 10K, 20K is is you know, um uh, maybe depleted and 80 K is into their pocket. But uh I, I don't want to just throw a number and say, oh no, but I guess what I'm just saying, if somebody's listening to this thinking about it and seeing that, hey, there might be an opportunity there. And again, yeah, it's I mean, just like here when somebody asked me, hey Jared, what's you know, what's a good rate per month? I'm like, well, it really depends on where you're at in time of year and well, you know, type of equipment. That's just a hard one to say, but I guess it's just, if someone's looking at this saying, Hey, 
you know, f- across the board, if I were to figure out, you know, if I had to get a dump truck, you know, can I make, you know, can I make a good living starting out, you know, making, you know, 50, 60 K after all expenses, you know, Oh, is easy. that, is that okay. easy? easy. I, I'll, I'll give you this. And I'll say that one of my trucks, it was, it had some issues. It was, it was just a, for that truck, it was just a bad year for that truck. It was, had suspension problems. That just things that came out of nowhere. We were doing PM and it just, we couldn't catch it, but it was down half the year and it still made 120,000 gross. Down oh, wow. half a year, it was down and still made 120. So that's the, that in dump trucking is, you know, it's, it's really about the consistency. If I can work four days, five days, and then turn around and put that truck at night work, then that's even more. And that truck didn't work any nights that year, last year. It worked, it was just strictly daytime and half the year and it still put in 120. So that's just to give you an example of the numbers in dump trucking. It's really, 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 really lucrative. And yeah, it's good you mentioned that you talked about because yeah, dump trucking versus a lot of other trucking. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of work that can be done around the clock. Like, yeah, you got to these highway jobs and those yeah. trucks running all night long when traffic's low and all that. Um, I would assume, and I know you're not, you know, you're not a guy to talk to on regulation. I mean, but you might know this, but uh, I mean, dump truck drivers have the same hours of operation, right? As a, as an over the road driver, is it a 10, a, 10 hour max? Or are there different rules for dump truck? We are operating? held up. We are held under the same rules as, as for the effort, but you do have some work around dump trucks really aren't, they're not really scrutinized for working more than 10 hours. Some, I mean, I've seen guys work two shifts, a uh, day shift and a night shift. Now it's not, is it safe? No, but we're, we, you know, we, we, what we're doing, we're, we're encouraging our members to put ELDs and cameras in their trucks. And these ELDs will start to, you know, they already are keeping up with their time and how much the truck is running. But I think it's it's making the industry safer because we have had things where guys push it to the limit. They try to go day shift, night shift. And I, I get it. I understand it. The, the money's there. It's like, man, I, I got to get it. But sometimes they may fall asleep at the wheel. That's how you start having the, the overturned dump trucks and all the materials. So, so we are tr- we are preaching EODs and, and cameras. We want to make the industry safe. And so we 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 are we are holding them to that ten hour. Hey, ten hours is good. Come back tomorrow and do another ten hours. Get some sleep. Get some rest. Don't try to push it. The work is still going to be here. Um, and you know, don't don't because this is how I look at it. If you go five days a week on day shift, how many extra shifts are you going to really truly be able to do if you're doing day and night? You got to sleep sometime. Something is yeah. going to fall. Some one of the like it's maybe two more shifts maybe I mean if you three of you I I don't think that's worth the risk of losing your life and your health so absolutely yeah uh, I wanted to talk to you it was months ago I was uh, talking to a company down in that area I think they're Florida and I would think that it's nationwide but they were saying it, it's it was hard to find dumb trucks to purchase like the demand was sky high for them and i think buying new trucks like you just can't find dumb trucks to purchase is that i mean is that still the case is there a, is there a high demand right now and not a lot of availability out there for there's a there's a high demand for dump trucks but what's what is crazy there aren't enough of them and that's what that's what the issue is and and economy has pushed the newer trucks up so high, like a, a new dump truck is two seventy five. Who who's going to be able to get a loan for two seventy five? And what this? was that in a normal market? I mean, before COVID and the industry, before COVID, you could get a a, a brand new dump truck for about one twenty five, one twenty five to one fifty. That so more than almost double the price. Yes, that is that is that is the so that's why the gems of the older trucks is yeah you you the the maintenance yes yeah, a little bit more taxing on maintenance but. The one thing we're putting together, we like we have a nation nationwide roadside service um, that will come out tires, fluids, uh, PM, whatever you need. Uh, they will come out and do it for you. And so it's, it's a dump truck bundle. Uh, you pay six seventy five a year. Uh, you have roadside service. You have a flat tire. They send somebody out to change the tire. You just pay for the tire. Uh, if you need a tow, the first two hours of your tow is free. Dump trucks, we really never go out two hours, but I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, you know, it's we we're putting stuff together to help with the older trucks. And, and you know, I, I have older trucks. I love them. I'm going to be honest. I have uh, I'd love the 07s. So that's that's the what I bought. I, I have one that's a 05, but mostly 07s. They have been great to me. I love Mac. The Mac is a great brand. Uh, reminds me of I call it the Honda uh, or the Toyota, the Camry. It's, oh, yeah. It's, the workhorse, you know, Hondas go a million miles, you know. So I, I consider uh, that the the Mac is a workhorse, and it, you know the engines that come in, they're they're very strong. Their uh, their rear end is strong. The transmission, the Allison transmission is strong. So uh, the older trucks are the gems, uh, and I guess I guess maybe finding older trucks is 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 a little tough. So uh, yeah, I could see it being an issue. But like anything else, I, I think we we you, you can find them if you just go to the right spot. As far as we talked in the very beginning, but I wanted to, again, this centers around, you know, talking about how much somebody could make, but then just the work that's available. You know, I, I don't think I've ever asked this on a podcast before because it's always, I always say our company can help, but we don't really do bulk uh, like dump truck loads. I mean, some of the stuff could be hauled in a dump truck, but most we're dealing with in dumps and hoppers, walking floors, stuff that's getting trucked. We're not dealing with the local shipments, but for uh, someone that's looking for work, you know, in a market, yeah, I think you know, calling general contractors, construction, asphalt companies, and all that. But is, are there any websites or places people can go to see if work's available in their area? Yes, and we are rolling that out very soon. And I'm not just oh. to sell the association. I just because I, I don't really. Uh, there is, is there a website? Not not really, but we have partnered with the DOTs in the country, all the DOTs in every state to get the local and, and state bids. So that's federal DOT. Then we, the local and state where we're carving away um, and, and different states and different cities to, to, you know, be able to get those opportunities and disseminate those opportunities to our members. And so that's the one key that we saw, okay, we can get them ready, but what happens when they need work with opportunities? Um, yeah, we can say, Hey, we can teach you how to get them and Hey, it's on your own, but, no, we, we really want to be able to help them all the way from A to Z and, and be able to put money into their pockets. Cause if we don't do that, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense as an association. So we uh, really have, uh, we were about to roll out a, a process of having uh, bids and work and government contracts and, and of that nature to be able to give to the members. So. Well, speaking of like government contracts, I know that a lot of times government contracts, they want, um, a lot of times they get rewarded like minority owned companies. Are, are there big opportunities for that for yes, minorities yes. in dump trucking and being getting on jobs? Yes, that's the easiest way as a minority to get work is if you know you have your DBE certification, which we help with that as well. Um, we help with DBE certification. We have somebody that will file it for you uh, that will do it the right way. Um, but DBE once you get certification, certification being uh, being certified minority owned, is that what that yes, is? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it's, it could be a long process and it, it could be really daunting. And, and we we simplified it for people. Uh, I remember uh, with my company, I, I did all the process myself. And so I remember it was so taxing. But uh, yes, uh, there is a lot of jobs because companies need the DB participation um, for a lot of their jobs. And so a lot of times it's 25 percent, um, 30 percent, whatever it may be. And so you can get on into that percentage and, and offer your services and that's the easiest way to separate yourself from the pool of all yeah. the dump drivers. Well, yeah, because I mean, I, I just think a dump trucking, especially, there's so many of these road jobs. I mean, road yeah. jobs or government jobs. I mean, yeah. so, man, yeah. there's got to be a lot of good opportunity for minority owned companies to take advantage of that. Yes, the DOT work is definitely big on on that. And there's been a, there's, there's been an influx of data centers that are being put up uh, all across the country. And these data centers are, are being attached to DB. I mean, well, I say participation of that, that nature. I just want to specifically say DB. It's a bunch of different things that yeah. play into the participation, but they have been asking for uh my own minority contract. I mean, minority companies that are certified so they can uh, be able to get that participation and, and utilize it. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of different work, but, you, you have to kind of be in that world to understand it. And that's what we are, again, giving the information to our members so they can be prepared. Yeah. Well, just to kind of close out here, uh, Marcus, just to speak to our audience, and uh, and we're going to put your your website 
and your link. So if you're listening to the the podcast right now, especially if you're on YouTube or really Spotify, Apple, you'll be able to drop down in the show notes below and you'll have all the links to just click and it'll take you right to the National Dump Truck Association. Um, but yeah, it sounds like, Malcolm, you guys are just a uh, man, uh, have a whole a la carte of, of op- opportunities for someone if they're just trying to get into the business, learn more about it. Um, to to do that, but yeah, I guess to, just just to sum it up, yeah, um, just speaking to our audience, what would you say? Like, if I'm out there, you know, maybe what I'm doing right now is not working. I want to get into dump trucking. What's the next step? The next step is to number one, sign up for one of our webinars. One of our webinars is the easiest way to get you access to our membership. It's 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 like a segue. Once you pay for it, you get a free month of membership. Uh, we we send you a free ebook. We do a one on one consultation with you to see where you're at in your business. You may have trucks. You may you know have two or three trucks, and just the business is beating you down right now. So we we spend that time with our, our members and, and give them that one on one attention, so we can put them in the right direction within our organization. But uh, if you want to get into dump trucking, uh, you can just start start with a, a, a webinar. Um, come on in, or if you just say hey. I don't, I don't, I don't need the education. Hey, I, I just want to come and be a member. Hey, come on. We can, you can uh, go on our website at the NDTA.org. So T H E N D T A.org. Um, you also can go to what we call our AMS system. Uh, we, cause it's, we have two different systems that we've kind of run our organization with. Uh, you can go to membership dot the NDTA.org. So those two right there will definitely, get you uh in the game and we have social media so look for national dump truck social um all social platforms instagram facebook uh linkedin you know join join all our platforms uh we have a podcast i don't mean to kind of throw a podcast no, love for love for you to come on and talk about it on our podcast but we have a podcast called the hollows hub it's um under our brand of the national dump truck association on youtube um but yeah, man, we we're definitely come come join us. We're doing some great things. You got a bunch of free things to, to get you started. An ebook that is was written by me, but not just me, other industry experts. Um, and I think that's what has separated us. Again, it's not about me, it's the other experts that we have a part of this. Uh the 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 high-level advisors we have, the 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 lawyers, the the insurance advisors, the of uh, it's so many director of compliance the uh banks the financial institutes the the mechanics the, it's so many different pieces awesome. of our organization that is is it just come together and made a, a great group and so please come take advantage if i had this when i started i i don't think i would have struggled as long as i did the first two years oh wow ago. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that too because I actually I got on your social media and, and you put together some really good videos. Just, um, I mean, I love just the short videos that you've even had on just different items and demonstrations. So yeah, make sure and follow their social media. Marcus, you, or I said Marcus, Malcolm, you do an excellent job of putting great content out there for, for listeners. And yeah, to be, I'd be honored to be on your all's podcast as well. So yeah, definitely yeah. hit me up and i uh, be glad to join you there. So um, Malcolm, I just want to thank you for coming on the the podcast, man. You can tell your heart is in it again for those operators out there. I think we always um, we learn from our pains and mistakes, and yep. you're really out there to help those out there not make the mistakes that you made um, yep. along the way. And again, I think it's one of those kind of quiet industries that nobody really knows or talks about. And within that, I mean there can be a lot of mistakes and people get taken advantage of. And I think you're kind of flushing that out and really promoting as a great industry to be in and really creating best business practices. So I, I really commend you on that. So man, I just want to sum up. Thank you so much, Malcolm, for coming on the bulk loads podcast. God bless you. Thank you. I appreciate you. And, um, Hey, we definitely want to have you on, man, because you you come with a lot of knowledge, a lot of, uh, hey, we, we, we're, we're talk after this. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler, you said this right in the very beginning, but I just want to bring that up to the forefront because that's one thing I've always seen from an outside lens of kind of, I guess, the bad business in dump trucking. And I, I know guys in our area that run construction companies that hire dump truck companies. And yeah, it just seems like, you got to be careful who you're working with. And especially when you're dealing like 
bulk commodities, when you're dealing with grain and all that, it's very, I don't know, it's a little more black and white. But I think dump trucking, when you're dealing with working by the hour yep. and job sites, and again, you got weather factors playing in there that it can be sometimes not favorable to the actual trucking company. So you got to be really careful. And I think like what he said, like get a contract up front, make sure you got something written in stone. Don't just start hauling, assuming everything's on the up yep. and up and then find out that things are different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gabe pointers out how to look for those reputable companies. That way you don't get burned. Um, but yeah, it was just a gr- great episode. Uh, we'll, we will link um, the National Dump Truck Association's website below. Um, they are really education focused. Um, kind of remind me of, you know, what we're kind of trying to do here with the podcast specifically is just create that community, um, a, f- a free resource for guys to get involved in, and just learn, learn about the bulk industry. That way they can stay up to date with education. Yeah. So drop down below. You can go right to uh, Malcolm, their website, and he's got membership options and he does a lot on social media. So I think there's a lot of just small educational things that he puts out there for people to know uh, that uh, that's just beneficial for the dump truck. So, yeah. Uh, definitely check that out. Um, before we tail out, just a couple announcements. Truck show season. Yep. Yep. We will have guys up in uh, the Walka, Iowa, uh, the I-80 Jamboree show, July 11th through the 13th. Um, we will actually have a booth there with Smart Freight Funding. So if you guys are there, let us know. We'll have some guys. We'd love to drop you off some swag, um, visit with you, even uh, take a tour. If you have a truck in the show, capture some content and promote that uh, free charge for you. Um, we also also have guys in Miami, Oklahoma, um, that same weekend. Uh, I think the rigs at the run is what it's called. It's another truck show. So if you're going to be at either of those shows, let us know. Um, that way we can make sure to meet up with you, maybe grab some, grab a bite to eat or, uh, give you some swag. You can go to the show and then pick up a load of drag sand right there in pitcher. Yeah, I mean, there it's there just right. <laughs> and if you know, if you know the area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a huge area that uh, a lot of drag sand comes out of. So, um, cool. Um, there was something else we were going to mention. Yeah. We just want to highlight the video shoots again. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Joe, uh, man, he's just amazing. Joe on our team is just really good at what he does. Um, and he is traveling around the U S right now with his camera and he's just visiting, uh, trucking companies and bulk loads of members, uh, all over the U S and we want to, uh, provide the opportunity for your company to be highlighted again uh it's just going to take an hour or two we'll schedule a time for joe to come out to your operation and we just want to simply highlight what you do and capture uh the the operation that you're running whether it's a one truck owner operator or uh you know you run a fleet of trucks or even if you're a shipper or broker let us know um if you would like the opportunity for us to come out and and, uh capture some content yeah the biggest cost is going to be just your time well i mean Actually, that's your only cost is your time. Um, we do this. We put this together. Believe it or not, you, most custom, most of our members, our customers, business owners, do this video shoot. It helps promote your company. And we promote it through our social media. And again, it's just a, we think it's a good thing. Obviously, we'd love to do it to highlight our members. But man, this can be very good for your business to help people know who you are. And you just don't know who might be list, or watching that video yep. that reaches out to you to say, hey, I see that you're based out of wherever and we do we do freight there so man let uh, actually there was a not to interrupt her but there was a cool story that we just heard from uh k2 logistics joe went out and did a, oh, a cool yeah, video yeah, shoot yeah. he did out. a uh he put together a little youtube short with uh tucker carlson and it, mike contacted us and said dude i've had like three or four people contact me just from that little youtube short that was put out um of people you know asking if they can come work for me or i think he even had some customers reach out um so that just shows you the impact that it actually has yeah yeah so again reach out to us we'd love to do that video you will not be disappointed yep let us know on social media or just uh, simply comment down below or uh, email us podcast at bulkloads.com yeah and i'm sure you get uh, get the alerts but make sure and subscribe to our channel because that rob grover one joe just pushed out last yep. week the fourth of july is amazing uh that k2 one yeah just yep. a really really cool video so yeah make sure and subscribe so you can see those so um with that said um oh yeah i was gonna say if you haven't been watching 
you don't know, but we offer prayers for people and our listeners. Um, you can simply email prayer at bulklows.com. I want to just highlight, and uh, we had a request individual just praying for, over their church and uh, rebuilding their sanctuary, yep. and we uh, we are praying over that. So thank you for sending that in. But yeah, any prayer within your community, within your family, within your business, we want to be praying for you. And uh, man, we would just love to have that opportunity. So yep. cool. With that said, I'll close this out. Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for blessing us um, and allowing us to bless others in this industry. Um, Lord, we know that there are um, people out there with challenges and needs. And Lord, we just uh, petition those prayers up to you, Lord, that uh, that you see and uh, Lord, answer those prayers. Um, Lord, we thank you for the uh, just the trucking and agribusiness community and uh, everything that you provide and lord i want to say just on and specifically on this prayer lord if there's someone out there that doesn't know or has a relationship with you lord that today be the day um, that they find you and that they establish a relationship with you um, lord Um, god we thank you for this time lord we thank you for this community and uh, thank you for all that you do amen amen Thank you, as always, for listening to the Bulk Loads podcast. Again, don't forget to subscribe. If you know someone that could benefit from this, do us a favor. Please share this out there on your social media. We would be very thankful for that. Thank you very much. And as always, God bless.